Hello everyone. Welcome to our first show on what might become a um, ongoing series about Nixos. I'm Liam. And I'm Matt, Matthew Crogan. You can find me on Twitter at, at Matthew Crogan. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm on some things too. I am Liam and part of Astral Ship, so that's my main main Twitter place. I'll put a link to Astral Ship in the description. Mm, yeah, cool. So we're going to talk about Nixos, and um, I'm a kind of a beginner newbie sort of light touch uh, user of Nixos. But you do use it every day on your I main do. system. It is, it is my my main desktop. I've been using it for a couple of years now, I guess. And um, kind of maybe in some form introduced it to, to Matt, who is now far more experienced and knowledgeable about it than me. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, so let's have a look at let's have a look at Nixos and uh, tell you what's what's good about it. So the first question is, first question is what's good about it? What's good about it? Yeah. Well, Nixos is very unlike any normal Linux distribution. Every single thing that I want my system to do is written down in a text file, and that's called declarative. And declarative means that, for example, in my hosts folder, this this whole git. This whole configuration I'm about to show you is managed with Git. And I have all of my systems that I use, like my laptop, which is called T480. Here. And so the configuration for my laptop is in this file. Everything that I wanted to do is in this file. For example, I enable Bluetooth for my headphones, along with the Blue Man Bluetooth Manager, which looks like this. The only reason this exists and is installed and is available for my usage is because I wrote it down here, services.blueman.enable equals true. And if we wanted to see what we could enable, you can go to search.nixos.org and you say, okay, services dot. And you've got all these services that you could enable and all these things that you can play around with. So blueman.enable, what's it do? Whether to enable Blueman, and you can Google what Blueman is, etc. But this is very different from normal Linux distributions where you might have to get install Blue Man and that does it once and then you never quite remember that you installed it. Yeah, so the state of your operating system on a normal operating system, you're adding things all the time and changing things and then when you get a problem, you don't necessarily know what the history is. You might end up having to sort of reinstall it and go through a process. What Nix allows you to do is describe, declare exactly how you want your system to be configured and then build it from a text file. So that's really useful if you're deploying servers and you want to know exactly how it's built. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you can just browse my repository, which is at nixconfig, Matthew Krogan slash nixcfg, and you can see all the things that I've done with it. And you can see that there's a paper trail of 71 commits, which led me to this point where I'm showing you it now. Like, let's take an innocent commit. So uh, Vim surrounds, like this is my Vim editor config. So what did I do here? I added a new plugin to my Vim RC. So when Vim starts up, it's going to start the, the plugins that are in this list, which are in square brackets, right? And there's a paper trail leading to that point. There is nothing on my system that can't just be reinstalled with a single command, Nixos rebuild switch, which if I was to run that would apply and realize the changes that I've made. Ah, oh, don't have Git. Let me just temporarily install Git. And now I've got Git. So do you want to explain that, that command, the Nix shell? Yeah, sure. What's, so, um, what's Nix shell doing? So right now I don't have Git. But yeah. if I type Nix shell dash P, Git, I'll have it for a moment. And then if I exit, I won't have Git anymore. And the way it's doing that is by modifying this variable called the path. Yeah. So, so it's putting putting Git in your path. In, so it puts you into a shell with Git in your path. That's right, yeah. So right now, uh, the current path is as follows. And if I did a Nix shell into Git and then echo the path again, you can see the path being modified dra dramatically to point to all of the dependencies of Git in the slash bin folder. Yeah. So this this lets you if, you, if you want to use a package and you don't want it sort of in your global system, you don't want it floating around there, but you just want to use it on a one-time basis, you can just open up a shell. Without having that installed, and they call it uh, ephemeral or transient shells. Yeah, so it's just right. a temporary environment. So, for example, it's like let's say I want Git and LSPCI. 
I know that happens to be in the PCI Utils package. Or not. PCI Utils without a dash. I now have LSPCI and Git. But if I get out, I don't have LSPCI or Git. And yeah. it's completely temporary and it's very beneficial to not clutter your system with constant additions of packages that you don't remember that you installed or whatever the case may be. It's uh, similar to a Python virtual environment in a lot of ways, except it applies to everything, not just Python. Yeah. Then there is, you you know, you can edit, you can make a stateful change, like with Nixn, you can install a package mm -hmm. that's then globally available. Yeah. It's not really the recommended way to do things. The reason that's not the recommended way to do things is because, for example, right now I can man ls and I can see how ls works. Okay. But if I nixenv dash install a package called busybox, which is now going to look up. Uh, and this is a this is a collection of basic utils. That yeah, basic most, Unix most utilities. Ah, sorry, I, I passed it the wrong command. Packages.busybox. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to use the new next command line. Uh, yeah, you're probably right about that. So I've got this thing called a channel, and this is kind of an old Nixoff concept. Are they, are they sort of out of date now? Yeah, they're kind of out of date, because now we use this thing called flakes, but it's going to look in the name of this. So, for example, I could get... Uh, BusyBox from 20.09 Nixos by doing 20.09. Oh, sorry, 2009.busybox. And then that'll look up this channel for the occurrence of BusyBox. Yeah. And these, these channels are, by the way, very simple to describe. It is simply a checkout of a given hash of Nix packages to the repo. Which is where all of the packages are defined. And we go to search.nixos.org by busybox. And we can find out what busybox is and how it came to be. And all of the history of this package and it's how it was made. And you can see there's some patches being applied to busybox here. Mm. Okay, and then you were gonna show the complication, you know, the, the messes you can get into by using Nixm, yeah. This actually happened to me when I started using Nixos, so I think I actually I think it was busybox. I did that with and yeah I may have actually forgotten how to install things with Nixon since I haven't used it for so long um I think it's just IA Nixm dash IA busy box with the Nixon. name of the channel that we want to get it from yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure so there we go that, that seems to work uh, my 2009 channel might not work anymore and this is one of the other problems with channels is that they can stop working over time so maybe not in this episode but I've never really used flakes. Seems like it's the way to go. Sure. I'm still using channels, so we could. Yeah, sure. I'm just going to demonstrate you can this problem. Explain it to me, and we'll record it at the same time. Sure. So I'll I'll um I'll demonstrate this problem, and then we'll move on to yeah. flakes. Okay. So the problem with Nextenv is this: if I do man ls, I can see that there is no manual entry for ls anymore, but there was before. Yeah. And the reason for that is because man is not coming from where I think it is. Right. It's coming from here. And that is a symlink to BusyBox in the next door. Yeah. Um, rather than the system-wide man, the GNU man, rather than BusyBox man, yeah. my environment is being corrupted and tainted. So this is what Nixos wants to get away from. So yeah. using Nixenv is kind of like the legacy way of doing it. And it, it comes along with all of those problems that you get. Yeah. So if you know the, the sort of best way to globally install something is add it into your Nix. Yeah, Nick's so I'll configuration. I'll show how I, I would do that now. Okay. So on my laptop, which is called T480, configuration.next, I have a section called environment.system packages, which has a list in between these square brackets yeah. of packages that I want installed. And this is all, this is the Nix, Nix language. Yeah, this is the Nix uh, expression language, which is a domain specific yeah. language for configuring systems. This defines your packages and you've got wget, chromium, etc., etc. All right. those packages installed. So right now if I add git, which I don't have at the moment, so I open up a new tab and type git, I don't have it. My system doesn't have it. If I write that change, um, I, funny enough, you actually need git to do this. So it's quite a bad, bad example. Yeah, because uh, Nix now relies on, on yeah. git. Okay. And you can see I've made some changes uh, that I forgot about. What's, what, what did I change here? I was adding like an alias, right? So... 
It's going to put that in there. It's also going to put this in there. The changes that I've added GIST to this list. And if I Nixos rebuild switch dash dash flake in the current directory, it's going to rebuild my system and realize the change that I have made. So the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to download all the Git repos it needs to do any of this. And in my case, that's a bit complex because I have lots of input in what I call a flake. On your system, it wouldn't wouldn't necessarily yeah. need okay. to do this. So this yeah. is this is updating the system, and it's, it's going. It's basically building the system according to the configuration.nix file. Yeah, and the changes like the the diff is is right here. And then it would um, this would then be a uh, reversible thing. So if for some reason the system wouldn't boot, we rebooted after this then in the boot menu you could choose the uh revision yeah so this this command here re rebuild switch is doing actually quite a lot so when, when you do a switch it's actually putting a new entry into the bootloader for your operating system so the next time it boots up you'll have a generation it's called yeah. so for example i might have 10 generations right now because i rebuilt switched 20 times or 10 times before mm. this before we're having this discussion or just because you rebuild even you, you, if you rebuild and then you reboot you'll be switching yeah exactly but there's also other commands for example test right uh, right now i think it's actually uh, upgrading my system uh because i accidentally forgot um to right lock my yeah because yeah. so all the, all the packages are getting like you did if you were on ubuntu and you did not get upgrade yeah i'll uh, show you rolling back right after this as well and then if you had done test it would be a dry run it would it would download everything it would build it but it wouldn't actually it would just check in case something didn't work. Yeah. Uh, the reason that this is happening is because in my Git log, you can see, I updated my flake lock yesterday, but I didn't switch. So I'm going to revert this commit. It's going to get rid of it. So now my flake.lock is the old one that I was using before. So I won't have to download all that stuff because it's not upgrading my system then. It's because I uh, wrote the lock file and forgot to upgrade and actually do it. So now the only change that's actually going to get going to happen is the uh, presence of Git. Or maybe not, because it's, it's, it's also doing Firefox at this time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we should have um, we should have built it once. Yeah, I didn't clean my environment beforehand. That's all good. But um, yeah, all it needed to do was fetch Firefox because um, I don't know. Actually, I I, I don't know. And now it's rebuilt. It's it's rebuilt the system. It's switching over the live system. Yeah. So now, if I go into a new tab, I've got Git. My whole system has Git. If I do sudo Git, I've got Git. Every user in my system has Git because it's in the environment dot system packages. Yeah. Diff on configuration. And you can see Git is now there. But whatever I want to roll back, so I can do dash dash rollback. And that goes back one generation. Yep. Yeah. So you can see I've been rebuilding a lot. 1,057 generations. Yeah. I switch a lot. Switch a route. So now if I open up a new tab, we don't have Git anymore. The whole system doesn't right. have Git. Okay. And maybe like as the last thing we could do the garbage collection. Sure. Um, so this is going to be really annoying for me because my Nix store is massive. So as you do these rebuilds, the, the Nix store gets really big. Because the Nick store is a really cool location where all of your packages live. Yeah. This They're input all hash addressed by a hash. Yeah, this input hash is a result of all of the libraries and stuff and dependencies that go into making, for example, D menu right. or bash. Like this so is a that that's gonna describe a unique build of that package. Yeah. Like... Yeah, so is it so um every single version of bash is a different derivation, it's called. Yeah. 
and so necessarily has a different folder with a different set of input hashes and yeah. yeah. So that gets quite large over time, as you can imagine. So yeah. You can do nix collect garbage. And at that point, it's going to get rid of everything that my system no longer actually needs, that it cached in case I needed it, but that nothing in the system is currently using. Right. And they're called garbage collection routes. So, if, for example, let's say, well, there you go. If a uh, freed 700 megabytes, so I didn't need 700 megabytes of packages in my system. That might have been because I did nix shell dash p something last month yeah and it's still it's there still it downloaded it it just left it left it floating around and yeah if you know i don't know whatever awesome boxes that obviously that version of awesome box wasn't being used by anything anymore it's not in your next config to be in the system so it was purged yep so uh cool. anything that was not necessary is not defined in the config is not is no longer present in the next door all right cool well i think that's a the whirlwind tour of, of basic nix yeah along um, with some issues that might actually describe or help people realize how it actually works because it's not perfect but i showed you kind of how i can just you know get restore or get reset or use git to manage my system rather than it being this yeah. thing that i have to run one command after the other in order to unscrew my system yeah yeah so if you like that give us a thumbs up and give it a share and we'll do more episodes and go into some more detailed topics of what, what's going on with Nixos. It's a really cool wireframe system. Thanks for watching. Bye.